Hey guys, it's Joya and welcome to a new video. I will be talking about life in the US versus life in France. I did a part one on this before. I will link it above wherever it is. And that was talking about like how I wanted to move to France and how I found a job and everything. And on that video, I received a few different questions. The first question I got was, how did I find out about the different types of visas? And you can find this on the France government website. Um, I'll just link it down below. And they explain like all the different types of visas that are available for étrangers or for foreigners. The next question that I got was whether or not I talked to a lawyer before coming to France. Um, I personally did not talk to a lawyer, but obviously this is a very personal choice. So it just depends on what type of visa you're going for. The next question I got was when did I apply for the visa, like within the entire process. Basically I got the job offer and then I filled out a bunch of paperwork. The company filled out paperwork and I submitted that paperwork to the consulate. That paperwork was the request for the visa. I didn't request the visa before I found a job. I like found the job first and the job offered me the possibility to ask for a visa with their help. So moving on to France versus the US. Just to give you some background, I'm from San Diego. That's where I grew up until like I went to high school. And then when I went to college, I went to Dallas. So I did four years in college and then I did four years after that working in Dallas um, until I moved here. So these are the three places that like I largely lived in. So obviously my experiences <laughs> are very specific to these areas. Um, you know, the USA is really large. France is really large. I'm not trying to make generalizations about everything, um, but there will be generalizations in this video. So just, that's a disclaimer. <laughs> I'm gonna try and like concentrate on the things that I think affected me the most when I moved here or that I think could affect you the most. For example, I don't think the fact that the milk is not refrigerated in France is gonna have a big you know, effect on your life. So I'm not gonna touch topics that are kind of like that, but just know that there are like lots and lots of differences between <laughs> France and the US. So. Having said all that, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the amount of space that you're going to get moving here. You're just going to be living in a smaller space. Ben and I are living in approximately 350 square feet and that's for two people. Whereas I feel like in Dallas that's unheard of, you know, like Cora and I were sharing like a 1,100 square foot apartment, I think. We had two bedrooms and two bathrooms, it was huge, you know. So yeah, that's just not the case here in Paris. The apartments are smaller there's a lot more density in the city. And so I definitely just think that that changes your lifestyle a lot. I mean, you, you have to reduce the amount of things that you buy, reduce the amount of things that you own. I think that that has a, quite a big impact on the way that you live your life. The next thing that I wanna talk about is like convenience as a whole. In general, like life is a lot more convenient and easy uh, in the US. I don't wanna say that there's no problems. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that if you wanna go grocery shopping at 11 p.m there will be a grocery store that's open. But in France, like everything closes at 7 p.m. Um, if you get off of work at 6.30 and you can't make it to the grocery store, like you're just gonna have to go another day. Another example is that like in the apartment complex that I lived in in Dallas, it had a parking garage, it had a swimming pool, it had a gym, and they were all at, like available for the tenants in the apartment complex. Whereas in France, you're gonna have to buy a gym membership and you're gonna have to get access to a swimming pool you probably are gonna have to pay for that and so there's a lot of things that just aren't as available to you in Paris as I felt like they were in the US so this is the perfect segue I feel like to go into customer service yeah customer service is a big deal in the US like if you show up at a Jamba Juice and there's one person working at that Jamba Juice they are gonna be taking orders they are gonna be blending up the drinks and they will be serving them within five minutes like you will not have to worry about your order being forgotten, all that kind of stuff. And if they forget it, they're gonna be like, I'm so sorry, like, please take this voucher and like, I will give you a free smoothie right now. In France, that is like absolutely not the case. You can show up at a smoothie store. There could be four people working at that store. There's two people in line. All four people are surrounding like one blender and they're all looking at why the blender isn't working. I think a big part of it is that tipping is like not a thing in France. We don't have to get into that. So <laughs> this is a big one. I feel like transportation and walking culture. I feel like you hear this about like every single person who studies abroad and they come back and they're like, oh my God, I walk so much. But it's like actually true. Like <laughs> you actually do walk a lot while you're here. And Ben and I don't own a car. Um, so all we use is the Metro, the bus, 
and then walking or public bikes, things like that. It's absolutely not stigmatized at all to use public transportation, like everybody uses it. Um, whereas I felt like in the US, public transportation was often kind of looked down upon. It was looked at as like dirty and slow and not convenient. So it was just easier to take your car. You might as well just take your car everywhere you go. Normally you're gonna have to take the Metro, you get to a certain stop, you're gonna have to walk five to 10 minutes to get to your destination. I feel like when I was in the US, I would always try and get the parking spot that's like closest to the door to avoid walking as far as possible to the store. Even if I'm gonna spend like 15 minutes in the Target walking around in circles, you know? Whereas now I don't mind taking a Metro stop that's one or two stops away from where I wanna go and like walking to get to that destination like I enjoy that now I don't look at it as like uh this is such a burden you know what I mean I know damn well that once I get back to the U.S. and I'm parking at that target I'm still gonna try and park at the front spot like <laughs> anyways a big one that I wanted to touch on was friendliness I find that the stereotype that French people are not friendly I think is wrong I think that French people are friendly um but they're just not as overtly friendly all the time as Americans are. So for example, in the US, your cashier, they're gonna be like, hi, how are you? Oh, how was your day? How was the weather? Oh my God, that's crazy. Like, yeah, I had so much rain coming in. It was awful. Like they're gonna have this whole conversation with you. In France, that's absolutely not the case. They're gonna be like, bonjour. Do you want it, your receipt? That's it, you're out the door. Like they feel like because they don't know you, it's a fake interaction to kind of do this uh, sort of small talk. However, I find that like when you are friends with French people, they're just as friendly and like they want to get to know you just as much as American people do. It's just that I found the door is a lot more oftentimes closed with French people. Um, I found that in the US, I could talk to somebody at a bar and potentially actually become friends with that person. Um, and in fact, a lot of my friends that I have to this day <laughs> are people that I met at a bar in Dallas. Here in France, I've had the comment multiple times that like, oh, how is it making friends in France? Like, I was like, oh, you know, it's a little bit difficult. Like I kind of miss, you know, how easy it was to make friends in the US. And immediately, this has happened to me multiple times. They say, ah, but the friends in the US, they're so fake and they're so shallow. And, you know, in France, our friends are, our friendships are really deep and we really are there for our friends like all the time. And I'm like, yeah, that's because you have the same friends you've had since you were like 12 years old. So you've known your friends for like over a decade. So of course you're gonna like ride or die for your friends. Um, but the possibility of making new friends, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that it's a lot more difficult here. And obviously that's coming as an American, but I do feel like, you know, my ability to speak French is really high and everything like that, but I still find it a lot more intimidating to make new friends here than I did in the US. Um, so all that to say, like, I really miss the American warmth and I miss like that just niceness for no reason. It feels like with French people, sometimes it like costs them to like be nice to people, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so I think that this one's kind of obvious, but the smoking culture in Paris is very different than how I grew up in San Diego. Um, in San Diego, smoking is really viewed as, as something that's like bad for your health and like nobody would ever do it. In Dallas, there was more smokers, but when I came here to Paris, I was like, they are on a different level. They are filling up their ashtrays vertically with cigarettes. They are smoking at work. They are, it's just chain smoking all over the place. It's, it's not legal, you can't smoke at work. No, but you guys take smoke breaks. Oh yeah. Smoking at work. <laughs> it's just like definitely part of the culture. The French really view it as like a petit plaisir, as something that like they can enjoy in their life. And they, I mean, it's really hard for me to understand this because we know how bad that the health effects are. But I mean, we also know how bad the health effects are of like drinking alcohol. And I think that it's a similar thing with French people is that like that's how they view it. I'm not saying that that's how you should view it. I'm just saying that like French people don't uh, think that this is like the worst thing in the world that you could do. And so they continue to do it. <laughs> this one's kind of related. Drinking culture in France is very different than it is in the US. Uh, the drinking age in France is 18. And so they start drinking a lot younger. And oftentimes they start drinking within their families. 
um, at dinners and everything like that. I've seen a literal toddler take a sip of champagne um, because they were like, this is our culture. So <laughs> that's just kind of like how early they start. Whereas I feel like in the US, it's very well known that like, because the drinking age is later at 21, it tends to have much more of a binge type of effect. I remember we went out to this bar and I swear to God, everybody in that bar was like 17, 18 years old. And we were like the oldest people there. And I was like literally 26. So um, that's just something that's a little bit different is I feel like in the US, it's much more common to like see people of all ages um, kind of going out on a night out whereas in France it does feel like it's a lot more of a younger thing to do because they start drinking younger and they kind of like finish doing it like earlier <laughs> which I still love going out and like dancing and everything like that but yeah it's less common once you get to your like mid to late 20s um, which is crazy to me because that to me is that that's like super young so we're gonna have Ben comment on things that I've said so far he's had a similar experience to me but like in reverse so he's lived in the US for a year and a half. And then he also lived in Montreal, so still like a North American uh, city for another year after that. Okay, so I feel like I touched on a lot of subjects already. Do you feel like it accurately represented the culture differences or do you feel like, no, they're totally different? The shocking thing for me is like the customer service. Yeah. The, <laughs> like when I first came to the US and I, you just go to a restaurant and the waiter is like a little bit to me it was annoying i was like leave me alone <laughs> i'm coming here to eat not to talk to you <laughs> yeah but i i learned to appreciate that about people are just way nicer to you yeah or things that would never happen in france like when twice someone offered me a drink in starbucks you know the car before me the oh they like bought it for you they yeah, yeah, yeah. For me and they were like Oh, it's been offered by the car in front of you. And I'm like, wow. And I didn't even think about doing the same thing on the car next behind me. <laughs> Maybe I broke like a chain of like, 20 people doing that. And it happened twice in Dallas. So, yeah, just the friendliness and the, the customer service everywhere. Yeah. Oh, that's something that I didn't talk about actually is generosity. People in the US are 100% way more generous. Like, like you said, they'll buy your Starbucks offer and everything like that. Somebody came up to me, a homeless person came up to me and asked for my soda. I was like holding a soda, I hadn't opened it yet. And I gave it to him because I was like, yeah, sure, you can have my soda. And my French coworkers were like, oh my God, why would you do that? Like, I can't believe that you just let him have part of your lunch. Like, that's your lunch. Like, and in the US, it's not uncommon to see people offering stuff to homeless people on like a regular basis, I feel like. Um, and yeah, the generosity, I feel like it has to do with the fact that like in France, you guys pay so much taxes already that there's kind of this like feeling of, I've already paid my dues. I'm <laughs> generous. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I've already been generous with like my taxes. And uh, I, I feel like also generosity in the US is almost a social thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the person you are, mm -hmm. you, you are marketing the fact that you are generous. Yeah. Like you see like people organizing like, generosity events like uh, raising yeah. money for for causes and stuff but at the same time spending crazy amount of money on other things and being extremely rich you know like I think this culture we don't really have it yeah here in France. The, how easy everything is in the US like I feel like there is such a gap when you go to the US uh, when you need a administrative paper when you need <laughs> to yeah. open a bank account. Yeah. Like to open a bank account in the US, you just need to say like, I live there, here is my passport and you get a bank account. Basically. In France, you need to have an address. To have an address, you need to show that you have already opened the bank account. Like there is such a, like everything gets complicated as soon as you're not exactly inside the, the regular process. I appreciate the lack of car culture in France. I appreciate that it's very rare that people would say like, what car do you own inside the middle of a conversation? Yeah. Why do you care? Yeah. I, did I tell you the story about the guy who like, I think he just like picked me and my friend up in his truck. And I was like, wow, this truck is really big. And it was just a statement of fact. And he said, thank you. <laughs> he was like, thank you. And I was like, mm. 
You're welcome, I guess. It was just, your truck is big. Friendliness, like how easy it is to make friends in the US. Mm -hmm. You don't know if they are actually going to be your friends. Yeah. Like, but it's so easy to talk to someone wherever you go. It's nice to go running to the only person that you will cross. You'll say like, oh, you're running fast. Good job, buddy. You know, you will never find that in France. Yeah. I think I'm biased because Dallas is not the US. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. Paris is not the France. Yeah, of course not. For the, for the American cities. So we are talking about two very different cities inside two different countries, even though we're really close. I feel like Paris and New York or would be way, way more similar. Or living in Dallas. I think Dallas is very particular. Like you don't yeah. find that in Europe at all. Yeah. Well, thank you for your yeah. opinion. So I got a comment saying like, oh, I hope that, you know, more positive Americans come here and move to France. And while like I understand the sentiment, I actually think that French negativity, you know, has its place. And I think that it's brought a lot of things for the French people. I think that they, you know, fight for their rights a lot and that they complain in order to have a better quality of life. And so, you know, that's not something that I, I don't want France to be more like America. You know what I mean? Like, and I also don't want to come here and not be unchanged um, by, you know, living here. I don't want to stay here and be exactly the same person that I was when I was in the US. So. While I understand the sentiment and absolutely no hate to the person who commented it, I want to be very clear that like, while I might complain about certain things, I think that it just highlights differences between, you know, what do we find important in the US and what do we find important in France. And yeah, I think that that's a good thing to be able to do, to be able to like see these things from an outside point of view. So once this video comes out, I will have lived here for two years. And I can say that I really like it here. So if I miss anything, if you disagree with me, if you have any other questions about the differences between living here and living in the US or living somewhere else in the world, um, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will get to them ASAP. And I will see you in the next one. Hi guys, and welcome to a new... <laughs> Your milk is refrigerated, friends. No, it's not. Your guys' milk is on a shelf. Oh, you're right. But we put it in the fridge at home. Yeah. Once it's open. Yeah, once it's open. Oh, you're right. But before it's open, it's not no, in the fridge. Never think about it. <laughs> Risk is one of the most important things, like in every company. There's like so much noise going on right now. <laughs> it's kind of funny because like I would never smoke, but now that I've associated like going out and partying at night with like cigarette smoke, like the smell is kind of like, ah, I'm home. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. I'm trying to act like I'm comfortable, but I'm, it's a stretch for me. <laughs> so like, if you cross a coworker who you don't like, you're not going to ask how their day is? No. Um, wow, that's crazy. Say hello, 